We are here in the uh, clean room of the LSTPC, being right behind me, and I will introduce to you today the LS High Level Trigger project. But before we go into details, uh, I want to show you a few numbers which are relevant for the understanding. Just take the TPC right here. It has about 320,000 analog channels on either side, uh, which are digitized at 10 bits and 10 megahertz altogether. That makes a data stream of three terabytes per second. There are other detectors in Alice, for instance, the TRD, which even produces 17 terabytes per second. This is far more than can be recorded by any existing computer system or storage system today. On the other hand, the governing principle of the physics behind is pure statistics. So many events happen quite frequently, and it's sufficient uh, to record a certain number of them, and any more are not interesting. So the idea is to select particular events out of the overall ensemble. And this is the purpose of a trigger. It selects the data coming from all the various detectors. And in case of the high-level trigger, it does a full analysis of all events coming in. The complete uh, processing of every bit which is recorded happens in the system. It is under then produces all the physics observables. And the final uh, analysis decides whether or not a particular event is of interest at all. That would be the trigger process. or if the event is of interest, but only part of it, that would be then a selection of the data. And finally, if some data has been decided to be recorded, it is subjected to a data compression scheme in order to basically reduce excess bits and save the amount of storage for more events. In order to fulfill this compute task, massive computer resources are required. So for the full analysis of Alice, there will be more than a thousand processors running and we're here in the second counting room of the Alice HLT. The data is received via optical fibers mounted on PC cards like this one here, uh, where you see an FPGA, which is also used as coprocessor. These cards are mounted together with another card in every computer, like this one here, which is an administration device allowing to completely manage whatever is going on inside the computer. This is one of our nodes. I will now show how to insert one of the FPGAs. There are already two of them inside and here are the fibers from the experiment. And here is our administration card. So I present you the online display of the high-level trigger in ALICE for the TPC detector. Here we see a proton-proton uh, simulated event at uh, 14 TV energies and 0.05 Tesla. Uh, with this display one can zoom on the TPC volume and choose to analyze a track property during the online data taking. This project is carried out by collaborators across the world from institutes in Heidelberg, Frankfurt, Bergen, Kolkata, Oslo, Calgary, and last not least, Cape Town. I'm a professor from the Kurchatov Institute in Moscow, Russia, and I'm the project leader of the fourth spectrometer of the ALICE experiment. Uh, FOSS is uh, actually the abbreviation of the photon spectrometer and that is why it is called FOSS and uh, uh, this is one of the main detectors of the ALICE experiment. Actually the main purpose of this FOSS spectrometer is to detect electromagnetic uh, radiation from the core gluon plasma object which will be created or fireball which will be created during the lead-lead uh, collision at the LHC. And uh, this is a very important signal of the core gluon plasma, of, of any obje object actually, because one of the advantage of the electromagnetic radiation is that this is so-called high pre-penetrating probe. The cross-section of interaction between uh, photons and the plasma is very, is, is low because uh, Photons, they have only electromagnetic uh, interaction with, this, with the medium. 
and uh, the free pass length is much larger as compared to the to the sizes, the dimension of the object of the fireball, and that is why photons they are leaving the plasma or the fireball exactly in the moment of their creation, and that is why they bring the information about the moment when they were created. And in that way, we can study the evolution of this fireball at, at all the stages. And one of the very important characteristics of the, any object, and of the quark uh, plasma object too, is the temperature. And so the main goal of this detector is to determine the temperature of the initial stages of the fireball, or hopefully the plasma, the quark plasma, by measuring the spectrum of the uh, photons which are irradiated by, by this fireball. And so uh, that is why the, here you can see the main physics topics which will be covered by the force photon spectrum, by the force. And uh, it is situated here at the bottom part of the Alice detector, and it looks like that. You can see it here. It, con it, is, it consists of five independent modules, and the basic unit of the photon spectrometer is so-called crystal detector unit, which is lead tungsten crystals, which I assume you have seen already before. And uh, then we have this photo uh, readout of uh, uh, avalanche photo diode, or APD, with the uh, sensitive pre-amplifier. And the force module consists of five such, so called, uh, force detect consists of five such uh, so called force modules. Each module contains 3,584 uh, detector units.